Hello guys, welcome back to another video and we're going to be working on the cheap BMW E90 3 Series again today. And we are going to be giving the car a complete service. And when I mean a complete service, I mean a complete service. So we're going to be doing everything that we possibly can today. We're going to be swapping out all of the fluids and all of the filters. So what are we doing then? Let me think. Oil and oil filter, fuel filter, cabin filter, engine air filter, gearbox oil, differential oil, brake fluid, clutch fluid, coolant. Is that everything? I think that may be everything. I'll probably miss something, but yeah, we're swapping out everything that we possibly can today. I'm also gonna be servicing the brakes as well, gonna be applying some grease to the uh, caliper slide bolts. BMW recommends that you should keep them dry, but I'm not really a big fan of that. I like them to be greased up with some red rubber grease, so we will be attending to that as well. But um, yeah, got a lot to get done today. This isn't gonna be a how-to video. I have, for every job that we're doing today, I have already done a how-to video you know, on how to do it. But um, yeah, today we're gonna really try and get cracking and get everything done. So without further ado, let's get outside and let's get cracking. Okay then, so as you can see, we have the car up in the air and believe it or not, the car is actually level. So the driveway is on a bit of a slope. So the front wheels are lifted up in the air on the ramps, of course, and the rears are on actual stands. If we have a look using a spirit level, you can see that that is pretty much bang on in the middle. Now it's important that we do have the car perfectly level for when we refill both the gearbox and the differential, but I'll get onto that when we do it. So I think I am gonna start with the engine oil first, but before we begin to drain it, we need to get the engine up to temperature just so it drains a little bit easier. And I'm actually gonna use one of these engine flushes. Now I don't like to use one of these on every single oil change, but because you know I've only just bought this car, I don't know the history. I don't know if it's had regular oil changes. If we use one of these, it's just gonna help break down any sludge that may have been built up. Now looking down into the engine, I can't really see any obvious signs of sludge buildup. It actually looks pretty damn clean in there, but yeah, you know, there's no real downside to using an engine oil flush, so we will be using it anyway. Engine oil flush going in then. Now let's get the engine fired up and let the engine flush do its thing. Now I'm going to leave the engine to run for 10 to 15 minutes or so just to let the engine flush do its thing. And while that is happening, what I'm going to do is start removing some of the engine covers. So the engine cover at the back, the scuttle panel, which contains the cabin air filter. I'm going to remove all of that ready for the later part of the service. Okay, so I left the engine to run for a good 10 to 15 minutes or so. The oil should be nice and warm now. So let's go ahead and remove the oil filter. It shouldn't be tight, it should only be 25 newton meters. Just gonna let the oil drain back down into the sump before I remove it fully. And on first inspection, oil filter doesn't actually look too bad. What I'll do is just drop the cap back in place, just so nothing falls down there, while we drain the oil. <sighs> Bombs away. And while I let the oil drain away, what I've done is installed the new oil filter, along with the new O-ring of course, and got the drain plug ready as well with new crush washer. And if you're wondering which oil filter I have used, I use this Marley one. This is the exact same as genuine BMW. If you use Marley, Man, Bosch, you're gonna be pretty good. Now we can go ahead and torque it down to 25 Newton meters. Yep, 
perfect. Now the oil has pretty much finished draining so we can reinstall our clean drain plug. And again, that can be torqued down to 25 newton meters as well. There we are. Okay, just removed the dipstick, gave it a bit of a clean. I can go back in. Now let's begin topping back up with oil. Okay, so the N47 engine takes between five and 5.5 .5 liters of oil. I have around four and a half liters in this jug here. So I'm gonna put the entire contents of this in and I'll check the oil dipstick level and then add more accordingly. Okay, so I've let that drain down for a couple of minutes. Check on the dipstick. It's around the halfway point. So I'm gonna add another half a liter and that should be at the max and I'm probably have to add a slight bit more because the oil filter housing is dry at the moment. Perfect. Okay, so I just had to add around another half a litre and the dipstick is right on the maximum mark now. So that's the oil change now done. Next thing I'm gonna do then is the air filter and I'm actually just gonna remove the air box completely just to give it a good clean out. Seems that nobody else bothers to remove the air box but it can be filled up with leaves and whatever else so it's like next to no effort to remove it anyway. Should lift out then. So we'll open up the air box itself. Just lift up these clips. See lid off. Let's have a look at the state of this air filter. Yeah, see this is this is exactly why you need to clean out your air box. I haven't even seen in here, but yeah, this usually is the case. People, for whatever reason, never seem to clean this out. They just swap over the filter and you're still left with all this crap in the bottom of your air box. So yeah, let's get rid of all this. Also like to give this tube a bit of a clean out as well. If you don't know what this is, I believe it is just for draining any water that has entered the air box. But if you take a look in here, it does in fact get pretty blocked up with small stones and whatever else. So I'm gonna try and remove all this and then give this a good blowout. I mean, your average mechanic would definitely not go through all this trouble when just replacing an air filter. But if you are doing it yourself, you may as well do the job right. Yeah, it's nice and free of debris now. Just reinstall that little bung on the end. we go sorted also removed the mass airflow center as well it's a good idea to give this a good clean out you can see it does have a thin film of oil on it so yeah i'm just going to give that a bit of a clean with some electrical contact cleaner take a look at the air box now what a difference it makes just to give it a quick clean out you know there's no point in my opinion installing a new air filter if you just have a bunch of leaves and crap in here that's just going to clog up the new air filter straight away so yeah massive difference that's made but now what we can do then is install our nice clean fresh air box we can get our nice new marley oem air filter nice and fresh let's drop that in Fits like a glove. We get the air filter box lid with cleaned mass airflow sensor back on. Make sure everything lines up, which it does. Perfect. I'll reinstall this. Plug the mass airflow sensor back in. Next up then is the fuel filter, which again we're replacing for OEM Marley. 
Okay, so potentially a bit of a problem. As you can see, I have removed the old original fuel filter. Now, I was trying to find a brand on it, and obviously it is a Wix one, which I can't say I've ever seen a Wix fuel filter for this car, for the N47 or for the BMW 320D. But I thought, you know, whatever, they must make them for this car. And then I removed, obviously, the original and, and I compared it to the new one, which you can see is in place now. And they are a different size and the fitting on the end is different. Now, I'm pretty confident that the new Marley fuel filter is the correct one. I have cross-referenced it with the part numbers and everything like that and it returns that it is for this car and it is for the N47 D20A. Now it came up that there was two different ones, there was one for the N47 D20C but that one is definitely for the A engine which this car has. So I don't know if this filter that was on was the incorrect one or what but yeah I'm just going to, uh, before I tighten everything down, I think I'm just going to fire the engine up obviously it will require a bit, of a bit of a cranking because there is some air in the system now but we'll prime the fuel pump a good few times fire it up just make sure we don't have any leaks okay then so we are in the car now then let's get the fuel pump primed a good few times now you can actually bleed the fuel system with ISTA but the majority of people don't have access to ISTA and I know for a fact that this is a self bleeding system like I said it will require a bit of a cranking but you can help yourself if you, like I said, prime the fuel pump a good few times. So to cycle the ignition on and off a good few times, get that fuel filter as full as possible. All right, here we go. And there we are. Strange that we had restraint systems pop up though. That was strange, the engine just cut out. Never had that happen before. Let's fire it back up. Seems to be running fine now, that was quite odd actually. Let's check the fuel filter situation. Yeah, no leaks of any kind, so I think we're good with that. Yeah, we seem to be running perfectly now. I really don't know what that restraint systems error that popped up was all about though. That was so random. But yeah, we seem to be running absolutely fine. Idle's perfect. And I'm actually gonna leave the engine running because I wanna get it up to temperature and I'm gonna open the heater core as well to get the coolant flowing through the entire system and then we're gonna do a complete coolant flow. Okay, so as you can see, remove the front air intake again. That's because I need to remove one of the coolant hoses. So there is a radiator drain plug, but it's a little difficult to get to. It's not worth the hassle. I may as well just remove one of the hoses. That way I'll drain more coolant anyway. So yeah, I'm either gonna drain it off the thermostat housing or off of the radiator itself. There we go. I'm going to remove the expansion tank cap. Hopefully it should drain a bit easier. There we are.
So as you can see then, the coolant is in fact pink and that is the incorrect stuff. That's why we're doing the coolant flush. It should be blue, the coolant. And to make things a bit quicker, what I'm gonna do to help, help flush the old coolant out is I have a hose pipe in the expansion tank. I'm just gonna keep that running and it should help to flush all of the old coolant out. So I'm pretty confident I've got all of the original red coolant out. And now I've just filled it up with regular water. I'm just gonna run it through one last time. I'll remove the pipe once more, just to make sure that we don't have any of the original coolant left. Okay, so I did drain it for the very last time then. And yeah, we have straight water coming out there now. So I'm pretty confident we got all of the original coolant out and obviously drained as much water out as possible as well now we are not going to be able to drain every last drop of water from the cooling system ideally you do want to do a coolant flush with deionized water but in my opinion you end, you're going to end up wasting so much deionized water that is it really going to be worth it i don't know but yeah, there is still going to be some regular water that remains in the cooling system so when we do our coolant mix which we have the proper coolant here let's have a look on the back so these are the dilution rates that you want to go accordingly to so minus 52 degrees max that's way too cold we don't need it to that degree again minus 36 way too cold even minus 24 that's going to be way too cold but i guess we will do it to that dilution rate so we want two parts coolant to three parts water and i'm going to guess there is approximately three liters of water still in there i mean it it's, hasn't got to be an exact figure like i said all that's going to happen is you're going to be better off suited to a colder temperature as long as we have enough coolant in here of course but yeah, because the entire system holds around seven liters supposedly, I think we have around three liters of water in the cooling system. So what I am gonna do is put in around three liters of straight coolant and then top up the rest with deionized water. Okay then, so I'm confident that there is around three liters of coolant in there now. I know it is showing pretty close to the maximum level, but that will drop once we get the engine fired up. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. Get the engine fired up, and all we need to do is top it up with some deionized water. And before we even have a chance to fire it up, the level has already dropped. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up to the max mark with the deionized water. There we are, it's right at the maximum mark now. Let's fire it up and start the bleeding procedure. Okay then, so as you can probably tell, it is a new day now. I was running out of daylight yesterday and you really wouldn't have seen a thing, so I thought I may as well carry on the following day so the cooling system that is completely done now i bled it up completely and then topped it up to the max mark so that is all sorted next thing i'm going to do then is the gearbox i've already cracked the fill plug which you should always crack first just so you know that you can get new fluid in the gearbox and uh, yeah I've also cracked the drain plug as well just need to release that then we can start draining the fluid okay, here we go yeah it's nice and black as expected fresh gearbox oil in then fill and drain plug reinstalled and torqued down and if you're wondering which gearbox oil I use it is this MTF LT3 this is the grade of gearbox oil that you want to use for this car. And if you're wondering how I got it in, just use my trusty hand pump here. Next up then is the rear differential. But on the rear differential, there is only a fill plug. So you need to suck out the old fluid and then put in the new fluid using the hand pump just the same.
Okay, rear differential done. We have drained the old fluid, filled it with fresh fluid and taut down the fill plug. In terms of fluid, all we have left now is brake fluid. So we have a pressure bleeder here so we can do the one person method. I'm going to drain as much of the old fluid as possible. As you can see, that is pretty disgusting. So I have a turkey baster. I'm just gonna drain that in here. And I'll connect up the pressure bleeder. And then what I'll do is actually bleed the clutch first, which if you don't know where the clutch line is. It is right next to the gearbox, just up there. Just need to find the bleeder screw. So I'll bleed that first and I'll get all of the wheels up in the air so I can take them off and then bleed all the brakes. Okay, so removed as much as that old fluid as possible. Pressure bleeder is on and pumped up to 20 PSI. Okay, so with the clutch fluid bled, I've also went ahead and reinstalled the under trays as well. Now all that's left to do is pay some attention to the brake. So obviously we need to drain the brake fluid all round and then we are going to be greasing up the slider bolts as well. Okay, so when it comes to flushing the brake fluid, you want to start on the caliper that is the furthest away from the master cylinder. So in our case, it is this side. The brake part actually goes to the other side and then it goes to the front. Typically on a car, you'll have it on the opposite side, kind of diagonal to the master cylinder. But in our case, like I said, it goes straight across and then it goes forward. And with the caliper slide bolts, I'm just going to remove them one at a time, give them a good coating of this red rubber grease, and then I'll go ahead and reinstall it. So both of the rear calipers have been bled, got all of the old brake fluid out. The slider bolts have been greased up. Let's get the wheels back on and then let's concentrate on the fronts. So then the other side is done, just finishing up on this one as this one is the closest to the master cylinder. Should only be a small amount of brake fluid that needs to come out of this one. And then yeah, I'm just gonna do the caliper slide bolts and then we can put the wheels back on and get the car back on the ground. Okay then, so brakes fully bled up then. Everything seems to be fine. Got the car back on the ground, of course. Got the scuttle panel reinstalled. All that's left to do now is the cabin air filter. Very easy to remove. Literally just held in by three tabs. That should just pop out then. Yeah, fair amount of pollen and God knows what else in here. So yeah, let's get the new one swapped in again. Marley Genuine OEM. And as you can see then, cabin air filter box all back into position, screwed into place. And this should be us, job done. Okay then guys, so there we go, a complete service done on the BMW E93 series then. And just got back from a drive and honestly the car feels so, so smooth now. The engine, for some reason, feels a lot smoother now. The gearbox is a lot smoother, I'm guessing mainly down to the fact that it's probably had its first service in its 155,000 miles. Um, yeah, no issues getting into first or reverse now, which that was an issue before when cold. It's a bit difficult to get it into first or reverse, you have to sort of... Uh, dip the clutch a few times but now seems to go in first time no issues at all um yeah like i said the engine feels smooth i'm guessing that could be down to the fact that we've just given it an oil change fresh air filter fresh fuel filter um but yeah we've you know we've pretty much done everything that we can within reason and whoever owns this car next they're going to be pretty much hassle free i would say for the next year or two and um, yeah, it's really only going to require minimal uh, maintenance. I'll say, you know, regular oil changes, but on top of that, really not a whole lot that they will need to do. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video anyway. I know it's not kind of been a how-to uh, video as such, but every single job that I've done in this video, I've pretty much made a separate video on anyway. So if there is anything that you, you know, maybe are not sure on, whether that's, you know, how to do a brake fluid flush, or a coolant flush i have made individual videos for those so be, be sure to uh, find them and check them out on my channel but like i said hopefully you have enjoyed it please give it a like leave a comment down below subscribe if you have not already done so and i will see you all in that next one peace